And just sit, uh, sit in your Varasana. So sit, we'll do a little bit of stretching before we do the chant. So sitting. On the end of your bolster. Is anyone menstruating? Just wave your hand. Interlock your fingers. Inhaling arms up. The thighs down, the tops of the thighs down towards the, the floor and lift the sides of the waist up. And bring the arms down. Change the interlock of the fingers. Turn the hand back. Inhaling arms up. It's really quite warm today. And arms down. Hold on to your elbows behind your back. Lift up the sides of the chest. And then just going forward, press the thigh bones down as you go forward, lengthen the sternum forward. And back up. Take the arms out to the side. From the shoulder blades, extend into every fingertip. Right arm in front, left arm underneath the right. Arms out to the side. Left arm in front, right arm underneath the left. Lift your chest. Soften your throat, soften the Shoulders down, out of the back of the neck. Extend the arms again and hold the elbows the opposite way to what you just held before. Lift up into your chest and going forward again. And sitting up, twisting, so inhale and exhale and just turn to the right. Inhale and exhale and turn to the left. And back to the center, and then just move off your bolster Move the bolster to the side and go forward. Big toes together and knees apart. And come up so onto down dog. Inhale and exhale back to downward facing dog. And on the breath, we'll do five. So inhale, come forward. Exhale, sit back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, hips up. So that's one. Back to Virasana. Two, dog pose, Mirasana, dog pose, three, Mirasana, dog pose, four, Virasana, dog pose, five. 
and then walk your hands in towards your feet. Either just hang forward if you can comfortably, otherwise have your hands on your legs and be straight back. And then come up and sitting down. Just sitting down for some ums. I have to initiate you all into chant at some point. Maybe we'll do that today. So I'll just, I'll do the whole chant. Those of you who can do it with me. And uh, those of you who haven't heard it before, just do your best. So that's how I learned it. I learned it in India, um, in Rishikesh. Gita was leading the chant. We were there for a big thing where Mr. Iyengar was teaching. They had an opening ceremony with a big painted elephant walking up the road and it was just fabulous. And then Gita was there doing an arty with a, a, you know, a fire burning and she just stood in the middle of the circle. We stood around her and she started doing this chant. I'd never heard it before and I just did my best to join in. So see if you can do the same thing. Bring the hands together in front of your chest. Let the inner thighs soften down. Soften the eyes back to the back of the head. Do the chanting, even if you, you know, it's, it's a chant to Patanjali saying, thanks for bringing us yoga and Ayurveda and grammar for purity of speech. But even just on a physical level, the chanting or singing really helps with the vagal tone. So the vagus nerve that runs through the neck has a lot to do with keeping the system calm and lowering stress levels. So have a go at the chant, even if it's, if you, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not perfect. Let your throat be soft. Let the eyes settle and move like you're wrapping them around, like you're wearing wraparound sunglasses. Let the eyes move back to the back of the head. Yogena chitasya padena vacham Malam shari rasya chavai yagena Yopa karotam pravaram muninam Patanjalim pranjali ranatosmi Apahu purushakaram Shanka Chakra Sitarinam Sahastra Shirasam Shvetam Pranamami Patanjalin Harihi Om. Just sit quietly.
and bow your head to your hands. Drop your hands to your lap. Bring your head up and let's start standing up. <clears throat> Standing in Tadasana to begin. Stand with your feet hip width apart. It's really good too, I don't know if you're in the habit of when you get up in the morning doing something to warm up, that's also really helpful I think as we head into winter. It's good to just walk, move whatever way you want to move to get into your body, maybe put on a little bit of music and because we've all got a different sort of choreography in our body, different way of moving. It's just, it's good to move your own way. But let's just start with rolling some, doing some shoulder rolls. And then the other way. And just moving whatever, wherever you're feeling glitchy, just try to sort of wriggle it out a bit. Shake out your hands. As we get older too, like once you sort of head over 40, it's good to do a bit of a warm up before you start anything. Let's get the joints warmed up. Okay. Now take, swing the arms up. Turn out and down. And again, swing up. Turn out and down. And swing up. And down. And again, up. Feel keeping your feet well grounded, good. Tops of the thighs back, inner thighs back. And then stand with the feet together. Turn, bring the, keep the top thighs back and bring the tailbone in and keep the backs of the thighs spreading from inside to out. Turn the hands out and bring the arms up. Breathe out as the hands come down. Breathe in as the arms go up. And down, uh, good. Do six like that. Two. Three. And go at your own time, go with your own breath. Just giving you a rough estimate, that's five. And six. Excellent. Now, interlock the fingers again. Feel those inner heels down, lift up through the inner legs. Keep the top thighs back, the back thighs spreading and bring the tailbone in. And then from the inner heels, bring the arms up. Sides of the navel, softening back towards the spine. Lift up through the sides of the waist. Arms down, change the interlock. Same again, inner heels down, squeeze the hips in towards each other. Keep the back thighs spreading. Bring the arms up. Keep your throat soft and fill it all up with your breath. And bring the arms down, good. We do Vasistasana, no, not Vasistasana, not yet, Vrikshasana. So standing, you can have a hand to the wall. Stand side onto the wall and bring
Press the foot into the thigh and press the hip into the foot. If you want to, yes, you can have the knee into the wall and press the knee into the wall to help you be stable. And then squeeze the thigh and the hip together. Sorry, the thigh and the shin. And then see if you can balance. Or keep the hand on the wall if you need, doesn't matter. And down. Uh, and change onto the other side. So standing on the other leg. That's it. Draw the outer thigh back into the hip, inner thigh to the knee. Keep the knee, try to keep the knee soft. And balancing if you can. And down, one more time, same again. Standing on the other leg. And just test your balance, see how you go. One hand or two hands, that's fine. And I just hop in a bit closer to the wall since you can also do it this way like Di's doing, where you've got the knee to the wall, but be in close enough so you can really hold the knee into the wall, press the knee into the wall, that'll keep you stable. And then it's easier to balance. So just hop in a bit closer to the wall, Di. So the knee's right on the wall. It also helps you to get the hip in Pressing the knee into the wall helps you get that outer hip in. And change, let's all do it like that on the other leg. The knee, bent knee into the wall. But these are slippery hands. Draw the line down between the two buttocks as we've been doing. Lift up the pelvis out of the legs and take the arms up. Just keep your throat soft and keep breathing. Good. Yaradasana. Standing on the right leg. Cross the left leg over the right. Squeeze the hips together. Keep this back thigh spreading, both back thighs. So there's sort of two opposite actions. The back thighs spread from in to out, and then the hips squeeze in towards each other. And up. Keep your throat soft. Try to keep everything soft as you do it. And then standing on the left, wrap the right leg around. Especially if you've got some arthritis in the hip, make sure you keep that hip in. Don't let it stick out against the outer edge of the hip. And then standing on the right once again. Add the arms in. Right arm up, left arm underneath the right. Balancing if you can, or use your fingers to the wall. And up. And change. Standing on the left. Left arm up, right arm underneath the left. Balancing if you can. And okay, now we'll do the half of the muscle, hands to the wall.
And full breath in, connect with your breath again. Full breath in, full breath out, soften your throat. Now we're going to do some Utita Hasta Padangasthasana, so leg stretches, standing up. If you have got a chair there, take the chair, but you can also use the kitchen bench or the, the shelf over the fireplace, whatever you've got. And about. So we're going to go, so we're doing this, but in a broken down version. So you would hold on to your big toe, if you can reach with your hand, and then extend straight out, like we're doing it towards the chair, so I can rest the foot on the chair. And hold, take the belt around the foot, turn to face, uh, hard isn't it you need to see me at the same time so I'll just show you first and then you can do it so bring the heel up like that and then straighten out the leg and rest it on your chair if you can hold your toes of course and do it then do it that way Bring the foot up, extend out the leg, take the leg into the wall or the, on the chair, and then take both sides of the belt of the hand. Left thigh bone back. The back thigh is still spreading like we did them before and lift up into the chest. Then just hold the belt again in the right hand, bend the knee and release the foot that way. And again, on the other side. Standing on the right leg, take your belt to your left foot, hold it in the left hand, bend up the leg and then straighten it out. Use the chair if you need. Otherwise you can just take your foot into the wall. Back thigh spreading, outer hip squeezing in, and lift up into the top chest. And, um, Hold the foot and come back down again. Okay, <clears throat> same thing out to the side. So you stand on your right leg. If you need to hold on to something and you've got something there, then just hang on to it. Hold on to the foot, left foot, and then bring the leg up and take it out to the side, into the wall or the top of the chair. Good. Neck of the big toe into the wall. Draw the line down between the two buttocks again. And lift up into the chest. Keep both sides of the back wide, also the front chest wide. Draw the line down a bit more, die between the two buttocks. Just try to lift the front of the right hip up out of the top of the thigh. But just watch at the same time, we've got to keep that top thigh back. And 
down good and facing the other way belt around the right foot bring the heel up and then out to the side One more, um, facing the wall again, so standing on the right leg, bring the left foot up. If you can reach your big toe, just hold on there and bring the leg up and straighten out. Left leg, hold both sides of the belt in the right hand or the outer edge of the foot if you can reach the foot. Both top thighs into the back of their thighs. So the left thigh is moving down, right thigh is moving back, and then lift up good out of the sides of the navel and turn to the left. and change onto the other leg. Make the right leg up. Yep. Hand to the outer edge of the foot if you can reach or just hold the belt and turn. Breathing your way in, see if you can, with the breath, go a little further. In the hips together again. And down. Okay, good. Move your chair out in front of you. You do Paj Bhattanasana. So left leg back. You can have the heel up the wall if you need, if you want that for your stability. Or down to the wall. So you're just pressing into the wall a little bit. And take the arms up and reach forward. You can have the chair closer if you want so the hands can go onto the the chair back and just reach out. And come up. And change on to the other leg. Inhale and exhaling, reaching out. Stay on the inner edge of the foot, so inner heel, neck of the big toe down in the front foot. Outer edge of the heel in the back foot. Left hip in.
and come up. And reverse trigonasana now. So just take your chair to the side. Have left leg back to the wall, right leg forward. You can take the left heel up the wall if you've got a wall there. Whee! Press the left thigh bone back, bring the left arm up and exhale and go forward. Take, and if you, go, if you can go further, you can take your hand down to the floor. Otherwise, just have the hand on the chair. Spread the back thighs, keep the hips squeezed in towards each other. You can move the chair closer and rest your elbow on the chair and use that to turn. And come up and put the chair on the other side. Right leg back. Inhaling, right arm up. And exhaling. Bring your right elbow onto the chair and turn. Both legs straight, tops of your thigh bones, press them back, good. Look up past the left shoulder if you can. And up you come. Move the chair out of the way. Going to do a few abdominal exercises. And lying down on your back. going to just have a look here and hold on to the side of the mat one leg straight both oh well just keep one leg straight that's fine and this one bent we're going to raise and lower this leg 10 times and keep the lower back long as you do that Don't have it resting on the floor. Just let it hover above the floor and then uh, change legs. Keep the lower back nice and long so you can hold the mat, push the mat away from you so the lower back stays long as you bring the leg down. Jenny, were you okay with that reverse trikonasana? Okay. And um, take your hands now behind your head. Inhale and exhale and curl up. Inhale and exhale, bring your knees towards your elbows. Stay curled up in the chest and just hover the feet above the floor. Keep the abdomen back towards the floor. Knees to the elbows, head to the floor, feet to the floor. And just lying down on your back. Inhale and exhale, bring curl up the chest. Take the abdomen towards the floor. 
Inhale and exhale, bring the knees to the elbows. Inhale and exhale, feet almost on the floor. Knees to the elbows, head to the floor, feet to the floor. Inhale and exhale, chest up. Inhale and exhale, knees up. Inhale and exhale, feet almost to the floor. Knees to the elbows, head to the floor, feet to the floor. And just for Salabhasana. So inhale and exhale and come up. And down. Inhale and exhale and up. And down. Inhale and exhale up. And down. Just stay lying on your stomach for Bhujangasana. We lengthen the toes back, hands beside the chest, shoulder blades down the back, and inhaling, chin forward, come up to your capacity. And down. And up and down. Don't force it at the beginning, just let yourself warm up. And up and down and up and down. Okay, we're gonna do Gomukhasana. So this is, we do the Gomukhasana arms generally. Add, we're adding the legs now. So have a belt if you need for Gomukhasana. Have a blanket handy in case you need that to sit on. And you're just going to have Be on all fours and take the right knee behind the left knee. Keep the feet as close to each other as you can and sit back on the heel. So if you need a blanket there between your heels and your hips to sit on to keep you balanced, do that. Really squeeze the hips in towards each other. Then take the left hand between the shoulder blades and the right arm up. Join the hands together and lift into the chest. And release, good. Undo the knees. Take the left knee behind the right knee. Keep the feet together as much as you can. And then sit back. Right hand between the shoulder blades. Left arm up and join the hands together. and lift up into your chest. Mm -hmm. 
and release. So you've got the legs are together, the feet are together, the shins are together, and then you sit back like that. And then you have the opposite arm, it's the arm that's up, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yes, so this is Gomokasana. And change legs. So, take the, the left knee, so if you go from all fours, the left knee goes behind the right knee. The shins stay together as much as you can make them. And then you sit back onto that. Squeeze the hips together. It's good for getting, um, sort of opening up the groins. And then right hand behind the back. Left arm up and join the hands together. And then sitting up in Vardhakanasana, so soles of the feet together, knees apart. Hold on to your feet and lift your chest up. Draw the outer thighs back to the hips. Shoulder blades in. And straighten the legs out to the side. Hands beside the hips. Press your thighs down. Lift up your chest. And back to Vardhakanasana. Lift up the chest. Uppa Vista Konasana, straighten out the legs. Dandasana, so both legs straight out in front of you. Roll back onto your hips, bend your knees and straighten the legs. And just cross your legs, sit back up again. Straighten out the legs. One more time, same thing. Bend your knees, rock back. Straighten the legs. Press the thighs away from you. Just hold for as long as you can. Any amount of time is good. Anything a little bit more than what you did before is good. And straighten out the legs. Okay, and now, um, Vasistasana. So going from dog pose with your heels up the wall. Take the right hand underneath your shoulder, right foot into the wall. Just get the right distance for your arms so you can be long through your right side waist. And top arm up. You can be on your elbow if you need. So if you need to be down lower, just have your elbow on the floor and get that tadasana through the trunk. That's it. Very good. And changing.
and back to dopus. And once more, same thing, right hand, right foot, left foot on top of the right, shoulder blades into your back or on your elbow. And change. Just have a go, even if it's hard, just have a go. If you do it for one second more than you had done it before, you're getting stronger. And back to dog pose. Walk your hands in towards your feet. Let's do now, either you can do a handstand, if you can normally, ordinarily do a handstand. Otherwise, just take your hands to the floor and walk your feet up the wall. Now let's do either headstand, if you're a headstandy type person or the Viprida Dandasana. So the two cross bolsters or whatever you can make that's like that. like a back bend, a supported back bend with the crown of the head going back to the floor or headstand. Uh, you can stay there for a little bit longer. Everybody else now go to shoulder stand or Seda Bandha. So now the difference is your feet are at the same level as your hips and your shoulders and the back and the neck are flat on the floor. And everybody coming down now and lying out for Shavasana. So just take a rolled up blanket along the spine. So nice firm roll. Roll it on its long edge. Yep, that's it. Beautiful. Rolled up nice and tight and start it at your waist and then put another blanket on top for your head. And lying out as soon as you're ready, nice and warm. You can use your, your bolster on top of your thighs. So 
just sit down in front of the blanket. You won't have your hips on the blanket, although sometimes you can do it that way. But um, for now, just buttocks on the floor. And spread the arms. Let everything soften now. So, especially the abdomen. 